Okay, welcome back readers. So today we're going to work on a reading workshop lesson. And if you hear that sort of like fan noise in the background, that's because I'm uploading a video right now. So try to drown that out. Now, so far we've been reading a lot of series books, different ones for our lessons. We've read some books from the Mr. Putter and Tabby series. We've also read a lot of Katie Wu books and we've been also diving into Iris and Walter books. And as we've been reading, we've been trying to focus a lot on paying attention to the different relationships the characters are having in the book, noticing details in our chapter books, and also paying attention to some of the speaking or the speaker tags that we see in our books, because that can give us clues as to how the author wants us to read parts of the book. However, I've noticed that in our lessons, we forgot to remind ourselves that it's also important to pay attention to the setting in the book. We haven't talked a lot about that. And I think I remember that just before we went on break, we actually kind of skimmed over these lessons a little bit with the chaos that was happening during that week. So I thought it was really important for us to revisit that topic about visualizing the setting, which means making a movie in our minds about where the story is taking place. Because right now, a lot of your books, whether you are in leveled books between F and G or H, I and J, they give you a lot of support with the illustrations to help you gather clues about where the story is taking place. But as we move up in our levels, that's going to be a little bit trickier. The authors and illustrators don't put as many pictures in your books when you keep moving up in levels. So we need to practice really perfecting that skill about visualizing the setting, making a movie in our minds by picking up clues in the illustrations that we do see and asking ourselves over and over, where is this part of the story happening and what is happening and when is it happening so do you think we can do that readers awesome so let's dive into our book for today iris and walter true friends written by eliza hayden guest illustrated by christine davenier ready iris and walter true friends Iris and Walter, True Friends, written by Alyssa Hayden Guest, illustrated by Christine Davenier. Ready? Table of Contents. Num well, chapter 1, Dreaming of Rain. Chapter 2, Writing Rain. Chapter 3, The First Day of School. Chapter 4, The Second Day of School. Ready, readers? Okay, let's dive right in. Now, before we even start reading our books, remember today we're focusing on the setting and paying attention to when are events happening in the story and where are parts of the story happening. So looking at our illustration right now, think, where is this happening? Think to yourselves, where is this story taking place? Now, it doesn't look like it's taking place in a city because a city has lots of buildings and lots of roads, sometimes houses with multi-story homes, apartments. And I see a lot of greenery, some dirt roads from what I am seeing in the illustration. There are not as many houses, or at least they're very far between. There's three here, there's one in the corner. And there's enough room for a horse to be galloping through. So I'm thinking it might be taking place in the country, maybe near a mountain. I don't know. I, I, I've heard of a lot of people going horseback riding in the mountains. That's why that came to mind. There is a stream or a river maybe running through. So based on my knowledge of Iris and Walter books, it's not taking place in the same area where Iris and Walter might live. So this might be a little bit farther away from where the usual Iris and Walter books take place. 
I'm going to have to keep reading, but this is definitely helping me make a picture in my mind about where the story is taking place right now. It helps set up a movie in my mind so that as I'm reading, I'm kind of understanding a little bit more about the story because definitely paying attention to the setting of a book can help you understand more of the story. Ready readers? Now let's start reading. Chapter one, Dreaming of Rain. Iris dreamed of riding rain over green meadows, down a path of pines, straight into the port. Oh, I already have to go back and get a running start. I forgot that tip someone gave me last week about slowing down my reading. Down a path of pines, straight into the sparkling stream. So, wait, I'm wondering if maybe this is a realistic setting. They did say it's a dream? Maybe this is part of someone's imagination. I don't know. I'm going to have to keep reading. You can't ride rain, said Walter. Why not? asked Iris. Because, said Walter, rain is fast and wild. But Iris wanted to ride rain. Hmm. Looking at the illustrations, readers, I'm wondering if this is taking place in the same part as the first illustration. Or maybe if these two pictures are two different settings. It kind of looks similar. Definitely the coloring looks similar. But I'm also thinking this is happening on two different days, just because if you look at their outfits, at Iris's outfit from this picture and this picture, and Walter's hat from this picture and this picture, it definitely looks like it's on two different days. So I'm thinking that as the pictures are changing, the setting for when they're talking is also changing. I have to keep paying attention to these details in the illustration because that's going to help me understand more and more of the story. Ready? The next day, see, I was right, readers. I was right. This is why it's so important to pay attention to the illustrations. They help you understand the story and help make a better picture in your mind about when the story is taking place and what is happening in the story. The next day, Iris put on her cowgirl boots. She put on her cowgirl hat. Then she and Walter went to see Rain. Come here, Iris shouted. Wait, I just mixed up those words again, readers. This happens a lot in our reading. We have to be very careful not to read. Well, sorry, we have to read, but we have to be, we have to pay. Well, I'm so sorry. I, it's the end of the day and Miss Horace is going to keep on making mistakes today. So you're just going to have to help me figure out ways to improve my reading. Ready? Yoo-hoo, Rain, come here, shouted Iris. But Rain only snorted and stamped her hoof, then galloped away. Why doesn't she come? asked Iris. Because, said Walter, horses don't like shouting. Oh, said Iris. The next day, Iris brought Rain a present. Come here, Rain, said Iris. I brought you Grandpa's special cookies. But Rain did not come. Why doesn't she come, asked Iris. Because, said Walter, horses can be shy. Walter, what do horses like, asked Iris. Horses like clucking and carrots and gentle hands, said Walter. Hmm, said Iris. Chapter 2, Riding Rain. The next day, Iris and Walter went to see Rain. They had carrots. They had hope. They had a plan. Iris held out a carrot. Come here, Rain, she said. But Rain did not come. Why doesn't she come, asked Iris. Try clucking, said Walter. So Iris clucked and clucked. Rain moved backwards. Rain moved sideways. But still, Rain did not come. Maybe Rain doesn't like me, said Iris. Maybe Rain is scared of you, said Walter. 
Don't be scared of me, Rain, said Iris. Every day, Iris and Walter went to see Rain. Every day, Iris clucked and clucked and held out a carrot. Then one day, Rain walked slowly, slowly over to Iris. Iris felt Rain's hot breath on her hand. Rain stared at Iris, then chomp! She ate the carrot. Oh, said Iris. Day after day, Iris and Walter went to see Rain. They fed her carrots, they stroked her neck, they sang sweet songs in her ear. Then one fine day, Iris climbed up Rain's back. Hold on, Iris, hold on tight, said Walter. Whatever you do, don't let go. And then Rain took off. Away Iris rode over green meadows, down a path of pines, straight into a sparkling stream. Oh, Walter, did you see me? Did you see me riding rain, asked Iris. Yes, you are very brave, Iris, said Walter. Thank you, Walter, said Iris. May I have a turn now, asked Walter. You bet, said Iris. Okay, so readers, as we've been reading, I'm really hoping that you've been keeping track of where the story is taking place and when are certain parts of the story happening? Remember that one way that readers keep track of things like this is by noticing how the pictures change throughout the story. At the beginning, sorry, at the beginning of the book, it seemed like this was taking place in a part where it was familiar to both Iris and Walter. It was sort of a zoomed out picture, but of a place that was very familiar to them. And I'm thinking or I have support in the other pages of the book because I'm noticing that a lot of these pictures seem to be very familiar or look really similar to what we saw in the first picture, just more zoomed in at least. I'm also noticing that even though it was the same setting, story was changing throughout the pages. It was one day on one page, it was the next day on another page, and you could tell because of the clothes that the characters were wearing, they kept changing. And that was reflecting what was said in the story, where it kept saying the next day or day after day, that Iris and Walter kept going back. So that made a lot of sense. And noticing those details in the book helped you both understand where the story is taking place, the setting, but how the story is changing throughout the book. So ready to keep on reading? I'm already noticing that the setting is completely different from the other pages. It doesn't look like Iris is back at where Rain was. So I'm wondering if the story is taking a completely new direction and we're going to be at a completely different place from where we were in the previous chapters. Ready? Chapter three, the first day of school. It was the first day of school. Iris was scared. I don't want to go to school, Iris told her mother. I know my Iris, said Iris's mother. I don't want to go to school, Iris told her father. I understand my Iris, said Iris's father. Do I have to go to school, Iris asked grandpa. Yes, my girl, he said. And when you come home, you will have my special cookies. So Iris walked slowly, slowly, up the steps with Walter. I feel cold and scared, Iris said to Walter. Iris, you are very brave, said Walter. I know you are brave enough to go to school, but Iris did not feel brave. Good morning, said Miss Cherry. Miss Cherry took Iris's cold hand in her own warm hand. Iris, right on in, she said, smiling. Welcome to school. So readers, remember how at the beginning of the story in the first few chapters, we were at a place where Iris and Walter kept going back to where Rain was spending, sorry, where Rain was living? Now, think 
and look at the pictures and think back to the words as well. Where is the story taking place now? What is happening in the story? I'll give you a few more seconds to think. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, let's come back together. So, think back again to the first few pages in the story, the illustrations, the first few scenes in the story. Where is the story taking place now? You got a very big clue within the first few pages. That's right, it's taking place at school. First, in this page, we see that Iris is still at home. But if you notice, the scene changed, the setting changed from being at Iris's home to being outside the schoolyard to being inside the classroom. Those type of noticings are important because it helps you understand where is the story taking place and when is it happening. Okay, let's keep reading. Hey, Walter, whispered Iris. Oh, did, that did not sound like a whisper. I have to go back and make it match. Hey, Walter, whispered Iris. I think school is fun. Me too, said Walter. And Miss Cherry is great, said Iris. The greatest, said Walter. But that afternoon, something happened. At snack time, Miss Cherry said, today it will be Walt's turn to pass out the cookies. Walter did not know what to do. He did not like to be called Walt. I wonder what he's going to do, readers. Don't forget me, Walt, said Benny. Over here, Walt, called Lulu. This is terrible, thought Walter. On the way home from school, Walter said, Iris, I don't want Miss Cherry to call me Walt. Why don't you tell her, asked Iris. I just can't, said Walter. That night, Walter had a hard time going to sleep. So readers, now the story, the scene in the story is changing again. They're no longer inside the classroom in this page. They were on this one, but now they're going home. They're on the road. They're walking back home. The scenery is changing, so we have to prepare our minds to change that movie that we've been making in the past few pages and getting it ready to change the setting. Ready? Think back now. Where could this story right now be taking place? Three, two, one. You think it's at Iris's home? No, probably not, because I'm not too sure why Walt, or sorry, he doesn't like to be called Walt, why Walter would want to be spending the night at Iris's home. They didn't seem to have been planning a sleepover, so that wouldn't make sense. He does have a picture of her though. Do you think it's at school? No, there's no evidence in the picture to support that. Is it in his own house, in his own bedroom? Probably, there is lots of evidence in this picture to support that thinking. So do you see readers why it's so important to notice where the story is taking place? Right now in our books, we still get a lot of support from the author and the illustrator in giving us clues about where the story is taking place. But very soon as we move up in our levels, a lot of our books are gonna have less and less pictures, so we're gonna have to do more of this work on our own. So that's why it's so important to practice right now in noticing how the scenery, how the setting is changing throughout the story. So when we get into those higher level books, it becomes so much easier to make movies in our minds and answer questions about where the story is taking place and what is happening in the story. Ready? Chapter four, the second day of school. The next morning, Walter woke up early. He wrote out the letters W-A-L-T, but they didn't look right. Suddenly, something white floated in his open window. It was a paper airplane. Walter unfolded the airplane. There was a note. Dear Walter, I want to help you, your friend Iris. Iris had drawn a picture of herself. She had written her name in big letters. 
Walter smiled. Iris! Iris! he shouted. Out here, Walter, she called. You gave me an idea, said Walter. I'm so glad, said Iris. There's something I have to do, said Walter. I'll meet you at school. All during music, Walter thought about his idea. He was worried. What if it didn't work? Finally, it was time for show and tell. Benny showed his puppet. Lulu did a magic trick. At last, it was Walter's turn. Walter showed everyone his painting. This is me, he said. Walter. W-A-L-T-E-R. Miss Cherry looked at Walter's painting. Then she looked at Walter and smiled. Why, that is a wonderful painting, Walter, said Miss Cherry. When the last bell rang, Miss Cherry said, Goodbye, Iris. Goodbye, Walter. See you tomorrow, Miss Cherry, they said. Outside, Grandpa was waiting. So, how was the second day of school? He asked. It was wonderful, said Iris and Walter together. D and So readers, this was a really good book for us to practice our noticing of how the setting changes throughout the story. There wasn't anything really big that happened at the beginning that kind of created a climax in the story for where the setting ended up being the same place where the story started. The chapters in this book were sort of disconnected and it was mostly tied to the theme of them being really good friends to each other where Walter was helping Iris feel brave and supported at the beginning and then at the end where Iris was helping Walter be brave to kind of show Miss Cherry what his name was so that he wouldn't feel be sorry so he wouldn't be so uncomfortable being called waltz but because of that it was really important for us to notice how the setting kept changing at the beginning it was more on the outskirts where iris and walter liked to play with their horse rain and then in the middle of the story it changed back to Iris' is home and school, and then it changed to Walter's home and then back at school. So again, right now it's very important for us to notice how the setting keeps changing because if we practice that skill right now of noticing how the scenery, how the setting changes, it's going to be so much easier for us to do this kind of work in our higher level books. So. Thank you for reading with me today. I can't wait to read with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.